Today, we're gonna to be installing this AFE Power Momentum GT Pro 5R Cold Air Intake Kit on this 2020 Plus Explorer ST. Check it out. Here we have the AFE Power Momentum GT Pro 5R Cold Air Intake Kit fitting your 2020 Plus Explorer ST with the three liter EcoBoost engine. If you're looking to get an increase of both horsepower and torque on your Explorer ST with no tune required, this is the way to go. It comes with two pre-oiled filters, an intake box, all the tubing required, and obviously all of the clamps and installation hardware required for an easy installation. No cutting or drilling required, and AFE reports a 15 horsepower gain and 17 pound-feet of torque if you add this cold air intake alone. This AFE intake for your Explorer ST outflows the factory intake by 27%. One of my favorite parts about this intake is that it has pre-oiled filters, not only great for flow, but they're also washable and reusable. What that means is over time when they become dirty, depending on your conditions, whether you're on the street more often or on dirt roads, they eventually get dirty and they need to be cleaned. We have a whole video covering how to wash and reuse your filters, so be sure to check that out on our YouTube channel. But regardless, you don't have to replace them, you can wash and reuse them. Another cool feature about this cold air intake is that AFE Power took the time to brand a lot of these different materials on the table. What I mean is that the seals, the couplers, and these fittings all have the AFE Power logo on them. Pretty cool. Installation itself is pretty straightforward, so stay tuned to the video so you can follow along step-by-step step on how to install this cold air intake on your Explorer ST. Here are the tools required for your AFE Momentum GT Pro 5R intake install. Go ahead and pop the hood. First, we'll disconnect the air intake temperature sensor. Then use a seven millimeter socket to loosen the hose clamps and pop both the tubes off of the air box. There's a few clips holding the lid in place as well as a wiring harness that need to be removed. Use a 10 millimeter deep socket to remove the nut holding the air box. Moving on to the intake tubes, there's a hose clamp you need to squeeze to remove from the turbo. A pair of pliers will get the job done. Then disconnect the crankcase vent tube from the engine, as well as the connectors on the wastegate solenoid, intercooler, and EVAP located on the back of the tube. Then you can remove the driver's side intake tube. Be careful not to get any debris in the turbo. You can cover the inlet to prevent this. As you can see, we removed the crankcase vent tube as it will be replaced. If the crankcase vent tube has a crankcase pressure sensor shown here, then a new tube must be ordered from a local dealership. Now we can remove the factory air box. Make sure nothing is attached and you can pull directly up. And you can see the air box was seated in these grommets. Onto the passenger side intake tube, you can see the hose clamp that needs to be loosened and then the tube comes right off. Again, be careful with the turbo inlets. Now it's time to assemble the AFE intake. Start by inserting the isolator from the factory air box seen here, and insert it into the air box as shown. Then you can install one of the filters on the left side of the air box, leaving the right side open for now. Starting on the larger of the intake tubes, grab the oblong grommet and insert it into the according hole. The logo will face outwards. Then the plastic fitting can be placed inside. Make sure the fitting and the grommet properly seal and are flush with each other. It might take a little finessing to get it perfectly in place. Grab some Teflon tape and install the smaller metal fitting right next to it and tighten it down. Then the larger fitting with Teflon tape as well. Moving to the smaller tube, we can install the supplied grommet as well as the supplied temperature sensor fitting. Remove the factory temperature sensor by rotating it counterclockwise and pulling up. And then twist clockwise a quarter turn to install on the fitting. Get the equal size coupling and some hose clamps onto the smaller tube. And the tapered coupling will go on the larger tube with the smaller side facing the turbo. This one will use one larger clamp and one smaller clamp. Moving back to the vehicle, we can install the air box into those grommets below. Make sure the threaded stud is aligned properly, and you can reinstall the factory 10 millimeter nut. Now we can install the shorter passenger side intake tube. And tighten those clamps down, starting at the air box. And also around the turbo inlet. 
Once that 10 millimeter nut is tightened down, the other filter can go in place. And the longer driver's side intake tube can be installed. And then tighten down all three hose clamps. Down here, you can reconnect the bypass valve hose. The wastegate solenoid can be connected to the smaller metal fitting up top. The supplied crankcase vent tube can be installed on the larger metal fitting towards the bottom. And the other end reconnected to the factory location. The EVAP and intercooler hoses will go into each fitting as shown. Next, we'll need to reroute the harness for the temperature sensor. It will plug into the sensor we installed on the passenger side tube. Then just tidy up that wiring and your installation's complete. Now let's go see how much an intake and two and a half inch exhaust lowers your zero to 60 times. There we go. Well, having an additional body in the car does not help. 5.07. <laughs> Between that, that was and a bad launch. this time, <laughs> well, I, I felt the tires slipping a little bit, but at the end of the day, the DA is 2,000, 2,004 feet. Okay. Um, in comparison to the last time we ran this, in that 4.76, the DA was 1147. So you got another 1,000 feet of DA working against you. Okay. We'll do one more. Getting tires slip in the back. 471. Yeah! Yeah! All right. <laughs> You're defying physics right there. There we go. Installation itself of the AFE power intake really isn't too bad on the Explorer ST. Just make sure to take your time step by step. That's why we do these videos for you all. So you can do it at home in your own garage with basic hand tools. Comment below and let us know what other videos you want to see on the Explorer ST right here on the Steeda YouTube channel. Hit us up at Steeda.com for all of your Explorer parts and accessory needs. Hit that like, subscribe button, the notification bell, and don't forget the most important thing, speed matters.